Hi, I'm Aidan Crane. Welcome to our state-of-the-art showroom and factory here in Balna, where we hand make bespoke kitchens. All our kitchens are 100% Irish made. We manufacture all kitchens to the highest standards to ensure customer satisfaction. If you would like to speak to our team, we are offering a, no, a free no obligation consultation with our team. You can book on our website at cranekitchens.ie or call us at 096-795-90. As we approach National Volunteering Week, Mayo COVID Community Response Team would like to express their thanks to the volunteers in Mayo GAA clubs and to all volunteers right across Mayo for their superb volunteering throughout the COVID crisis. The work that you do and have done and continue to do is greatly appreciated. Good evening, you're welcome back to Elvery's McHale Park in Castlebar. The second of our two live games is coming up very shortly here this evening. An eight o'clock throw in for the Egan Jewelers Intermediate Football Final Clash of Baal and Kilshima. Uh, again, uh, we have some spectators in behind us, which is great to see after the last few weeks uh, that we've been without them. And we're looking forward to what should be a great game. I hope you caught the junior final because I'll tell you something, if we're going to have anything like that in the second game we're in for a treat here this evening I'm delighted to be joined by our big match analyst for this intermediate final Thomas Morley and Declan O'Reilly um, Thomas we have some spectators in and as Liam Moffat said earlier not as many as we probably would have hoped um, and it would be lovely to see this place full this evening but it's great to see a bit of a crowd back again yeah I suppose I'm very conscious of the fact that you know there's an awful lot of people at home um, even across the world that, uh, and I suppose it's, it's up to us and, and uh, I suppose Midwest and all of that there it's a lifeline for the ordinary spectators the ordinary true uh, supporters uh, that would normally be here today it would a big occasion like this um, conscious of lots of people at home in, in Kitchema and Baal um, Baal I suppose is my second home so um, I, I have uh, a skin in both games I suppose um, you know I suppose uh, just think of people like I know Mihal Higgins is at home I don't think there's that many many uh, games that he's missed um, uh, just again uh, Shane Freeman at home too wishing him uh, health for uh, the year ahead um, but yeah a great occasion um, a lovely day um, a little bit of a breeze now it's probably getting a bit in, uh, cooler now um, you have your retro top on you there and uh, you might have to put on a jacket in a minute but yeah it's going to be a great game I think um, and I suppose we, we'll talk about the uh, the intricacies of it in a, in a while but uh, for the people that are able to get here today it's going to be it's a great atmosphere building and, and after that the people that are at home hopefully they'll get to see a, a great fair Absolutely Declan that's a great point you know um, Sean Carey spoke a little bit about how after a county final is maybe the part of the day or the evening you remember most because it's the people you meet, you know, be it family or friends that come on after you've won a county final. At least the teams that are involved this weekend will have a little flavour of that. It's very important. They will, and we talked about this before, Tomás, myself and yourself, just about supporters, and we, we hoped that 
the association could get together with the government and they could collaborate and work together and organise something that the people that support the clubs, essentially you're talking about family members here, close friends, uh, relations, uh, club stalwarts that want to get in and watch these matches. So it's a, it's a starting point. It's great. I think it's doable. I think, I think the Mayo G have done a good job here organising their strategies, exits, entries, all that type of thing, social distancing obviously, keeping them all apart. So it's great. But you mentioned county finals and winning them and been lucky to be involved in a few. Funny enough, I, the times I remember the most is really with the team in your dressing room afterwards. There's, there's about a 20 minute period there if you're lucky enough to win it that you can just soak it in and see this is it, we've done it. And both of these teams will be looking to get that half an hour under the belts later on this evening. They will absolutely, albeit it'll be in the stand after the game with no dressing rooms. Moss, let's get down to talking about this one. We had a super junior final here earlier. You know, on paper we'd spoken about, you know, the, the, the bookies' favourites, the Red Hot favourites were Kilmeen. Now they came through it, but not without a battle royal with Kilmina. On paper here this evening, it should be Kil Shema. Uh, but can you, can you write the script, uh, you know, this early in the evening? I don't think you can. I, I don't think you can in, in uh, county finals in general. I think uh, you know the underdogs um, will always come with with a, with a fight. Um, I think you know I, I predicted to catch them all during the week, I suppose, um, and that's not just I suppose a bias thing. I think they're I think they're a strong uh, team. They might have uh, physically too much for for Bal, but I seen it myself obviously during the during my own time with Belly Hornets, for example. You know, we were rank outsiders to, to get relegated that year. And, and when you stand on that pitch in a county final, um, all betting goes out the window. It's, it's about, I've all, I always felt, and Declan, I know this from, from uh, all the county finals that he was involved with, um, one or two points, you know, to get them, to get on the score, it's a massive thing in a county final. You know, in other games, you know, you might have uh, big score lines. Um, I know that year with Belly Hornets, for example, you know, one or two points, like at certain times in the game, the, the, would say just after half time or the first 10 minutes they are are massive and it all depends then on where the momentum is going um, Bal uh, are here on merit um, they have a young team um, they, have a, they have a lot of things going for them um, Kelchema if they bring and this is what I've said uh, during the week if Kelchema bring what they did against uh, Hollymount um, and if they bring what they're capable of I don't see at the moment uh, that Bal would beat them so I say it's in Kelchema's hands, but it has been in two other occasions and three other occasions in, in other times um, to win. Um, but you have to go out and win it then. Yeah. Uh, Declan, I know we, we're, we want to get one of you, and it'll be you set up in the commentary position in just a moment, so I'm conscious of that. I wanted to ask you about where you see some of the big battles in this game being this evening. Where where do you see it breaking down to? And where will, if you believe Kilchema have that edge, where will they have that edge? Or where are Bal going to focus on most? where Kilchema have done very well over the last number of games is particularly in the middle third. They have two giants of men and Paul Kelly and Sean Walsh in the middle and they're dominating their primary possession. So they're giving their, a platform to their half-backs to attack and in particular they're getting quick ball into the full forward line. So I think that it's going to take a huge game from Barry Duffy and JP Riley in that middle section if they're going to have to break at least even with Kilchema there. I see that as being a major battleground for the outcome of this of, of this match here this evening Angelina obviously the full forward then TJ Byrne he's been getting a lot of direct ball and I know that Jared Holian has, has been back playing good football for Bal this year so that'll be a very interesting battle and then there's battles all over the place one I, I, I'd be very interested in as well is Conor Dunleavy Tomas would have known him from Miners a couple of years ago good young exciting footballer full of pace will look to get down the pitch He'd be matching up against a very experienced, maybe less agile player, but really good forward in Owen Lavin. So that should be an intriguing battle. So there's matchups all over the place. I don't think there's any particular style of play that either team is going to counteract each other with. And there'll be a lot of individual battles to be won. But I agree with Tomas here. I think it's Kilchamas to lose. But unfortunately for them, they've been here in this position before. And I distinctly remember a semi-final against Ben Mullet and a final against uh, Westport. And I also remember a final that I'm sure they all remember against their other neighbours, Moy Davids, on the other side of the Kilchema that they didn't come out with. So Ban won't fear Kilchema. They're going to go out of whatever they have. They're a young, they're an up-and-coming team. They won a minor A in 2017. Now, to win a minor A is a high standard of football, so you're going to produce a lot of good players. So those lads are now 20, 21 years of age. So they're they're looking to build. So they're going to go at this with everything, and I don't think they've anything to lose. So it, it, it could be a great battle. Really looking forward to it. OK, well, Declan, we'll let you slip off to get set up in the commentary position. And
um, and we'll, we'll kind of wrap our side of things up with you, Tomás. So th there are some of the key battles that Declan believes will win and lose this game this evening. If you were a ball manager coming in here this evening, Tomás, and you know people are telling you, yes, Kilshima have these strengths here on paper, they look like they'll win it. What would you be doing or where are the weaknesses do you think that, that they could exploit in the Kilshima team? Well, it should be more of the same. Um, I suppose in, in some of the games in Ben and Robe, um, the, against Ben and Robe, um, they, were, they were down um, and it looked like they were in trouble. But, you know, it also you had to look at the fact that, that Luke Jennings from Ben and Robe had pu pu pulled off some world class saves, actually, uh, to keep them in it. So they were there, thereabouts. But what I've been impressed with them against Mayo Gales as well, they were in trouble for a while, but they finished off the games quite well. On the other side, though, Kachma have done that as well. Um, I've said too that the benches are going to make a, a massive difference and I think uh, both sides uh, ha have brought on Bal Rotmeen for example has come on in Bal um, but Kelchema every time they've actually uh, emptied the bench around with say 10 or 15 minutes to go they've met a massive uh, uh, influence uh, they've had a massive influence Conor Malik came on the last day scored three points so if I was just you know Jerry Butler doesn't need to hear anything from me but um, it would be more the same uh, and to attack, to you know, to really go at them. To the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes is crucial for Bal, um, to, to not just to stay in it, but to to to, to worry Kelchima. Um, Kelchima, as I said, are, are in uh, Division One for the last couple of years, um, and, and I suppose they're a strong team. Bal, you know, it's not that they're they're, they're um, I suppose uh, overly young either, but they've been in a different league and if you were to if you were to say it to them they're probably thinking like this is a year too soon for them maybe um but as i said before when it comes to a county final all bets go out the window it's about the passion and say the, the actual how they go about their business in the first couple of couple of minutes will tell you exactly how this is going to go you know, when you're in a county final, though, and we, we, we started talking about that and what it means to areas and means, like you could see it with Kilmaine earlier and with Kilmaine, how special an evening is it when you're here like this in McHale Park, warming up, getting ready for an intermediate final for us? Yeah, look, at it, 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 it's it's tense. They're, they're all not thinking, they're, they're, they're just thinking about their own games. They're thinking about, you know, um, how they played the last day. You know, I've been in a few county finals, I suppose, in my time. And, you know, it, some people I heard, Oshin Mullins there um, talking on Midwest, saying that he doesn't listen to anyone at half time, that he just zones out. And a lot of people do that, they sort of zone out. Um, and some of these guys here will be uh, very focused, other people will be very worried. Um, Bal, you know, maybe there's less pressure on them. And, you know, but it is a very special time. It's, it's, it's a time where, as I said, going back to the fact that there's no one here really, only you know, the supporters. You know, um, I remember, you know, uh, coming back after after games and the, the cavalcades and the, the people, you know, patting you on the back and all that. You know, I remember 2009 with with uh, Catch March, 2010, let's say with the junior thing, where there's a sea of people here. I remember that with Belly Harness as well. A sea of people here, um, t you know, thousands of people like, and what it means, people crying, guys that I didn't even know, like crying, you know, and, that, and that's, uh, you know, that's the special part. Of it. These are the things that you remember, and I was saying that even to my young fella there the last day, catch my one, an under 14 East Mayo, and when they were coming home from it, I was saying, you need to really be in the moment in these times because these are the things you remember in 40 years' time. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I, you, you said you have skin in both mm. camps, call it for me. Well, I've seen there they're not letting me on co-commentary because they're afraid there'll be a, an unbiased Mike Finnerty has already <laughs> said it to me. So uh, um, uh, Dick, Dick Riley apparently, he, he can talk about every team, but I can't. But anyway, um, if, if I, the, the, no matter what I look at at the moment, I see a win for Kel Shema. Um, but as I said before, it's, it's all on the day. And you know, I have my back to, to, to Bal here, but I haven't been able to even looking at them. But I think they've got some very right. special, <laughs> special players there. Um, very impressed with uh, Jack Hart this year. Um, very impressed with, we'll say, Val Rotting when he's come on. The mid midfield partnership, as, as Dex said. And I keep on saying in the commentary when I'm let on it, um, is that, <laughs> that um, uh, if you win midfield, if you win midfield and you get possession, then it makes it easier, obviously. And today, I, I just think that um, uh, Ketchuma have the edge. Okay, the most. I'll chat to you in a little That's while, fine. definitely. I prefer that to I, Mike Finnerty anyway. <laughs> Any day. <Yeah. laughs> he, I paid him to say that. So that's the views of our big match analysts. We're going to hand you over now to our commentary team of Mike Finnerty and Declan O'Reilly. Yeah, thanks very much, Angelina.
um, Angelina taking up her seat in the stand. Tom Morley slipping into a Kilchama jersey <laughs> just in time for the throw-in. And uh, as Tom so put it uh, put it so well, Deck and I in position for commentary of the second of the four big championship county finals here in Castlebar this weekend. One down, three to go. And before we get underway here in the intermediate final, Anthony Kavanagh from Clare Morris is going to sing the national anthem in just a couple of moments. But as you can gather from our pictures here, dusk beginning to fall on the county town. What a job by Anthony Kavanagh from Clare Morris. Uh, Deck Riley, I could see a straining at the leash there. Uh, if that doesn't put everyone in the mood, nothing will. Yeah, he sang that one well, Mike. There's no doubt about it. That sets the that sets the tone for the evening, really. It's, I suppose we've said it before, but it's an absolutely perfect evening for football here. There's not a puff of a, of a breeze. Um, the, the the pitch is in immaculate condition. Um, the the lights are on. The the, the dusk is, is just falling here, and um, it's set up for a really good game. Looking forward to it. So our referee, Liam Devaney from the Ballina Stevenites Club, just checking everything is in order. Ball have made the change that they make most uh, weekends when they play championship, and that is Val Rockneen, despite being named 12, he doesn't start, and Podge McLaughlin wearing 20 comes into their attack. Kilchama unchanged from the programme, from what we can tell. A Kilchama team chasing intermediate title number six. No club in the county has won more intermediate championships than Kilchama. The last of their five back in 2001. Ball chasing their first ever county intermediate championship title and away they go. Barry Duffy, the big midfielder, right out of the blocks coming down the centre of the uh, Kilchama defence and back goes man of the match in the semi-final. Donovan Cosgrove to sweep and tidy link with Jamie McNicholas and that Ball chance has disappeared just as quickly as it was created as Kilchama, the 2-1 to one on favourites, get their hands on the ball back in the heart of their own defence. Man coming out with that ball was the big number uh, six, uh, or five rather, Sean Forkin. Across to this near side, to the cornerback, Kevin Mulderig, likes to get forward, stretches his legs, fouled by Gary McHale, free to Kilchama, taken by Brian Gallagher, in over the top, one for TJ Byrne to chase, he's been marked by Ger Holian. Holian uh, puts in the first hit of the evening on the big full forward. Aidan Cosgrove is wrapped up by uh, a defender or two, and Liam Deveni felt uh, that was a foul, and Kilchama have a shot at goal. Declan, it's been a very quick first 65 <laughs> seconds. Has. And uh, look at Kilchama going long. We talked about it beforehand there, myself and Tomas. He, he kicked it long to TJ Byrne. Uh, Aidan Cosgrove got on the ball, and he was double teamed by Ball and to give away a soft free. Should be the first point here for Ron Lavin. He is the top uh, scorer in terms of players in action in this county final. 26 points he had coming in to uh, tonight's game and that is point number 27 as Kilchama ease in front inside 90 seconds and now the ball is in the hands of Matthew Flanagan the ball goalkeeper for the first time clicks it uh, nice and short to Ger Holian that uh, is a pre-rehearsed move ball where possible like to avoid the midfield contest work the ball up through the lines here's JP Riley transferred from the Colum Kills Club in Longford before the start of this season. He's the ball number nine. Connor Welsh lays it off to Gary McHale. Man of the match in each of uh, Ball's last two games. Welsh again. And now the centre-back, Sean Morrissey. Back to McHale. They play soccer together with Manola. McHale barreling his way through. He's a big, strong man, Gary McHale. And he's just kicked the equaliser. 
they go score for score inside the first couple of minutes and so much talk about Mikhail coming in Declan and there again he shows what he's, uh, what he's all about yeah he has scored 1-3 in each of the last two games two big games and obviously he's brought that form with him into the final he went direct he shook off two kitchen men and popped it over with the left foot a great score from him and a great start well a beautiful afternoon here in Castle Bar has transferred into a, a nice evening as well conditions perfect for this intermediate final as Kilchuma moved the ball downfield very quickly. That was a lovely layoff by Aidan Cosgrove to Mossy Keegan. A couple of solos, sucks in two defenders. Here's Cosgrove again. It was a lovely build up and the shot just spun away at the last moment. And that is wide on this uh, near side from the boot of Aidan Cosgrove. Yeah, he was very unlucky, Mike. He was dead right to take on the shot and Mossy Keegan did very well to hold it up. Man off the shoulder and he, sh- he shot. He was just unlucky to the tail wide. Ball again goes short to the roaming Podge McLaughlin. They hold possession. Ger Flanagan, joint captain of this team, up the line looking for Aaron Welsh. Connor Welsh is steaming across, collides with Matty Cummins. That will be a line ball to Kitchima. Yeah, it's a Kitchima ball all day long, yeah. Again, uh, 200 people in for this county final. At this stage, the Kilmaine and Kilmina supporters, I would imagine most of them back at home. Many of them perhaps watching this intermediate final. That is, of course, if uh, Kilmaine have finished their, their victory laps. Uh, when last we heard Declan cited doing laps of ball and robe, I was told. Can be a hard time to get out of, Mike. <laughs> Jamie McNicholas, the Kilchema goalkeeper, moves it on swiftly. This is Sean Welch, otherwise known as Topaz. Topaz uh, has become Circle K in the last... Uh, few months not quite sure if the paperwork has gone through yet to change his nickname and in any event that uh, Kilchuma move has broken down Matty Cummins trying to link with Forkin hasn't worked out Aaron Welch calls the mark hand in the air he kind of take a mark off a sideline ball and I think he didn't know that Dick I, I say he forgot it again that's that's a typical thing and I know Tomas referenced it earlier on in county finals strings things can happen people forget where they're about referee was on top of it though in fairness to him now that's a mark well that is the Mojiruk and a prime example of it, it was a, a very long delivery into the, the bomber himself, TJ Byrne, and a nice handy one for TJ and Kiljuma lead for the first time 2-1. A handy score, all right, but there's nothing handy about his mark, Mike, because he had to go out and he'd win that, and that's really what the whole thing was designed for, for, for I suppose, high-pressure catches in that, up in the scoring zone. He won it well, and I think we'll see plenty of long direct ball into TJ Byrne tonight. Well, his dad, Big Tom Byrne, was lethal under the high ball. So TJ hasn't uh, licked it from the grass as Connor Welsh goes in after this. Donovan Cosgrove, the man who did so much to curb Darren Cohn in the semi final. He's got Connor Welsh to contend with tonight. This is Colin Murphy, and that is wide on his own side. He just snatched at it. Yeah, he was right to take the shot. It's going to be a good battle here between Conor Walsh, who played most of his football in defence, and he's coming up now against Donovan Cosgrove, who's having a fine season. Lovely kick out from McNicholas to Brian Gallagher, and Owen Lavin hits the uh, dirt here in front of us, pushed over by Conor Dunleavy. Yeah, they got their legs tangled. There was nothing in it. It's, it's, it's 100% a free, but certainly no malice or no take or no care required there. Ball in the hands of Tomás Keegan. Wanted to take it quickly. He's not in the right position. Ushered backwards as Kilchuma try to get somebody free. Killian Finn makes his run. Son of John Finn, who played for Mayo at number seven for years and years, back in the 80s and into the 90s. Here's Sean Welch again. Had it, lost it, and away goes Barry Duffy. Played minor and under 21 for Mayo in the not-too-distant past. Duffy gives, goes again. Gary McHale is after that. He's extremely quick off the mark and he's made good ground here. Lays it off as far as Tommy Reynolds looking for Welsh on the edge of the square. Donovan Cosgrove, well, he arched his back brilliantly there to take it down, hold off the forward and uh, win a free for good measure as Kilchuma try to inject some pace into this move. Kelly goes long. They're looking for Finn. Breaks off the arm of a ball defender and they had so many bodies back. They were expecting that long delivery. Ger Flanagan gets a touch, decides to turn infield away from where he felt the trouble was and now it will be Baal who'll just uh, slow this down, wait for the right move, they take the wrong option though and Sean Morrissey has his hand pass intercepted by Brian Gallagher, Finn 
This is Sean Welsh again. Back as far as Killian Finn. Gets his head up quickly. Lovely ball. Picks out Brian Gallagher, who turns, who didn't look at the goal. And that was the crucial mistake. He thought he knew where the goal was, but that's a way for another Kilchimaw wide. And then he had a mark. I don't know, did he realise he had a mark? I know he's an attacking half-back and he has played a lot of football in the forwards, but he kind of just rushed at, rushed at it a bit. Um, gets forward a lot now and he will be a threat for Ball. Matthew Flanagan, nothing on short this time, so he puts boot to ball and drives it down on top of J.P. Riley. Jumps with Sean Welsh, ball breaks behind them, picked up by Murphy, and now Barry Duffy again. Very athletic midfielder, will keep going from end to end for as long as he can. Here's Aaron Welsh, he's in, and Good Aaron ball. Welsh buries it in the back of the net. Goal for Ball, it comes in the eighth minute of the county intermediate final and it left Jamie McNicholas with no chance and it is the 2-1 to one outsiders Ball chasing their first ever intermediate title who lead double scores yeah and direct football again right in he had to win it off to Underman Cosgrove who ended up marking him he got the ball in front of him he turned him he knew exactly what he wanted to do where he wanted to put the ball showed great composure and tucked it into the corner a great goal and Kitchman were just beginning to get on top so that's a really good counter punch by Ball so the first goal of this county final scored by Aaron Welch from Belcarra for Ball and they lead by two points. Pressure applied by Flanagan on Keegan. Paul Kelly, first man to react to the breaking ball. The big Kilchumat number eight. Decides to bring his wing back, Sean Forkin, into the game. Jack Hart is chasing after him. Ball trying to keep the pressure on. Trying to squeeze Kilchumat tighter and tighter. They go long towards TJ Byrne. He and Holian joined at the hip. One pulling, the other dragging. And they're still not finished with each other. And the referee is left with no option but to blow the whistle. Ger Holian has had the jersey pulled off him and over his head. <laughs> and TJ Byrne is just fixing the collars yeah, it's and a warm getting evening. his, uh, it's his a game warm, face on. It's a warm evening. I don't think it's that warm that you can take your shirt off, though. The boys got into a tangle. Again, it's very much direct ball into TJ Byrne. I think Kitchamat will have to vary that a bit because it's going to, be a get, it's going to be become a bit predictable. And Ball are dropping an extra man back there. It'll work now and again, but they have to be able to run it through the hands at certain times as well. Yellows all round from Liam Devenny. One for Holian, one for TJ Byrne. And they will now have to be on their best behaviour. But that battle in there is already shaping up to be a right one. Yeah, and that's one that we would have uh, identified beforehand. And Holian is playing well. He missed last year. He's back playing good football for them. And TJ Byrne is really a go-to man for Val. So it's an intriguing battle. And a lot will depend on who wins that one. So out on the field, it's Val against Kilchama. In the dugouts, it is Ger McNicholas, the Kilchama manager, against Ger Butler. Native of Shrule, lives in Barna, manages Ball. Here's Aaron Welsh, the goal scorer, leaves this short, leaves that one behind. And Jamie McNicholas with a really good delivery to set Kilchuma away. Paul Kelly crosses the halfway line to his midfield partner, Sean Welsh again. Lays it back to Aidan Cosgrove, head up again, football from Kilchuma. Killian Finn trying to slide in, but there was too much expected of Finn there. He was behind one man in front of the other. Ball doesn't find him. And instead, it's Ball's turn to get their hands on the ball again. Flanagan goes back as far as uh, the corner back, Stephen McNicholas. Ger Flanagan again runs into Killian Finn. It's very much uh, use it or lose it over there in front of the media tower. Ball managed to hang on to it at the moment, but Kilshima are snapping at their heels, forcing them backwards, yard by yard. And now Podge McLaughlin in across the centre. He goes to Morrissey. This is Colin Murphy, another former county minor. Ger Flanagan bounces off the uh, Kilchima centre forward. Dahi Leiden, Connor Welsh. This is Dunleavy. Connor Dunleavy Touched just the slipped and then touched it on the ground. Free to Kilchima. And that was really good pressure from Quilchie. Yeah, it was. And Ball struggled to get out of their half there. And it was good disciplined defence from Kilchima. Just what they wanted. Got a good turnover. Forced Dunleavy to pick that one off the ground. Keegan. Trying to come at an angle. But because Mikhail is obviously a real threat for Bell, so I think Gallagher is going to try and get forward as often as possible. So Keegan with the free, short. just short, Flanagan underneath it. And he needed a second bite, but he manages to get it clear from goal. Links up with the brother Jur, the two lads from Ballyclaher, sorting out it out between themselves. Kilchema still trying to keep the pressure on though, but Ball managed to clear their lines. Looking for Connor Welsh, outnumbered though, three to one. That was good play in Initially by Matty Cummins and now Donovan Cosgrove into Sean Welsh. Back to Paul Kelly. The two midfielders dovetail nicely, but the less said about the final shot, the better. Twelve and a half minutes gone, Tomas Morley. What have you made of what you've seen so far?
13 minutes gone in the first half of the county intermediate football final and it is Baal who are making the early running the county junior champions of 2018 as another Kilshima attack breaks down time and time again they go long Baal have got Podge McLaughlin sitting in to sweep and he is doing it to perfection so far good strong run by Gary McHale but again the final shot is poor yeah. and it's well wide of the Kilshima goal the last two shots we've seen on either side now I would have find has been both of them have been poor shot selection. A rush of blood, great carries into good positions, but just didn't show any composure on the ball at the end. Smart kick out by McNicholas to pick out Sean Forkin and Connor Heenahan, who has played in and lost three county intermediate finals during his career. Comes forward, man who works with Joe Dadai, goes long down to the bootlaces of Killian Finn. Finn did well, wins it, wins the mark, and Killian Finn stylishly as ever. Pops over Kilchamas third point. Much, much better from the pre-match favourites. I'll tell you what, he wasn't hanging around on the mark, was he? He just wants to get it done straight away. I'd say some people just don't like that time on the ball in the 10 seconds. He just wants to get down and kick the ball. Uh, it works for him. He knows what his strengths are. Good score. He shows well. I'm watching Finn. He's dropping out deep sometimes and then he's going inside. He's drifting in and out. So um, he's going to be an option for Kilchamas all the time. He's getting free. 110 now for Killian Finn in the championship. Ball's lead paired back to the bare minimum. Kilchama come again, look for Finn again. He's very, very quick over those first five yards. This time he goes back to a teammate, and that is not the equaliser. That shot has been missed by uh, Kilchama. Aiden Cosgrove, it was, I think, that took the final shot. No, no it was Keegan, I think. Massey Keegan, Keegan by the looks of him. Yeah, yeah on his left foot and he's normally reliable and he's normally accurate it's one that got away he'll be disappointed with that one uh, normally accurate player in front of goal uh, as I said Killian Finn seems to be playing in and out but when he's inside he's making those runs he's getting away from his marker and he is a threat for Kilchama Kilchama of course uh, unbeaten in the championship but drew their first two games in the group against Swinford and Lewisburg didn't look at that stage like they'd be here tonight but they got their act together they got the show on the road in their last three games too good for Bonnie Conlon, Cross Malina, and Holly Mount Caramore. Foul on Connor Welch. Donovan Cosgrove didn't retreat quickly enough, and Connor Welch will take the extra yardage because now all of a sudden it's well inside Colin Murphy's range. The big centre forward, but nine points he kicked coming into this county final. But because Cosgrove didn't retreat, that mark has now turned into a free, so he can give it to whoever he wants. So that's now handed over to Colin Murphy. So Colin Murphy looking to restore the two-point cushion for Bal. Yeah, he has it. He's got a very unique style of free-taking. It's uh, it's a throwback, Declan, to, to the old days, isn't it? Yeah, it's old school. It works, though. He knows what he... He, throw, he kind of throws the ball out and swings the left peg at it. That sounds a bit maybe uncouth, but he knows what he's done. He has a style that works for him. Good luck to him. One, two to three. Killian Finn is again the go-to man, switches corners, and he is having a really... Good tussle in there with the cornerback, McNicholas, Stephen McNicholas and Killian Finn, I think, felt the full weight of the ball man there when he came down on top of him. And we're going to have a stoppage here. Killian Finn needs a little bit of attention. Yeah, but that, he, he got out in front again, but that's one he should have collected, actually. That one hopped off him. You're disappointed he didn't get that one. We couldn't be far from the water break. Now this uh, first half is flying by and certainly not passing anybody by just yet. Certainly not Bal, the underdogs who, coming into this game, quietly confident that they can upset the odds, quietly confident they can make history and deny Quilchema the Sweeney Cup yet again. Remember, beaten in 2016 and 2017, Quilchema. This is Barry Duffy. Gary McHale just timed that run to perfection can go 0-60 to 60 quicker than most he's gone by uh, Cosgrove yeah. he's taken down by Heenahan now there's going to be a card you'd imagine was that a deliberate takedown pull down by Conor Heenahan I wouldn't think so I'd imagine that's a yellow card I'd put it down as a clumsy tackle that'd be my interpretation of it but the only man that counts here is Liam Devon let's see what he thinks yeah yellow for Conor Heenahan but that was a very penetrating run by McHale, he is so quick across the ground, an accomplished soccer player, an accomplished goal scorer, and 
The man that has made this ball forward line tick over the last few matches as Colin Murphy slots over the free. They'll head to the water break deck with Ball leading 1-3 three to 3 points. We didn't expect to be saying that. Mikhail is doing a bit of damage. I, I don't know, did we expect to see it? I, I wouldn't have thought Ball for one instant would be would be anyways afraid of Kilchima and it's just showed that they're going at them with everything that they have and um, the thorn in Kilchima's side for sure is Gary McHale. He's causing a lot of trouble. Tomás, your thoughts? Yeah, look at... Uh, I sort of said in the past, um, Kachma sometimes in the forward line don't track back enough, and even in that case there, um, it started uh, back in the in the back line, uh, and two Kachma forwards just stood up and let them go by them too easy. That gives the overlap, and then Gary McHale is, uh, comes through the middle. Um, I suppose uh, one thing you could say about Bal is they're very economically economically with their their shooting now. They've put over most things. Uh, Ketchum have had a few chances to put them wide but it's the intensity you know you sometimes you say in a county final that the first 15 minutes is you know people trying to sort themselves out and see how they're getting on uh, and feel their way into the game but Bal, both Bal and Ketchum have started this rip roar if Bal can continue on this they've got a good chance Tomás just briefly from a tactical point of view what do you make of the way Bal have set up to try and counteract TJ Byrne well, and I mean Killian they, Finn they've dropped someone uh, uh, guy back in front but Ketchum have to then uh, spread it wide uh, and keep the width in the game so that they can actually um, go through the actual middle um, and, and pick off their scores so there's a guy there but then Matty Cummins is sitting back on the, uh, in, in front of Conor Welch as well so it's a bit even in that way Thanks Tomás uh, yeah, it certainly is uh, a game of chess in the uh, two defences alright Ger Butler and Ger McNicholas trying to keep each other guessing trying to keep each other honest 19 and a half minutes gone Aaron Welch's goal, all that separates the teams as Dahi Leiden gets on the ball and rolls out of the tackle from Jack Hart. Quick hand pass from TJ Byrne to Sean Fork and there's a man in the middle, Aidan Cosgrove, steaming through. Fork and tries to find him but the pass goes behind him. He just had to check his run, go back out the field and all of a sudden he's closer to the stand and the goal. He's now out on the sideline. He does well to juggle it and get it inside to Owen Lavin but Owen Lavin under pressure oh. from Tommy Reynolds and Conor Dunleavy and the ball runs harmlessly out over the line and wide and there's that intensity and pressure from Bal again it is and it's good pressure but I see Dunleavy just after throwing Lavin to the ground afterwards he just needs to be careful the linesman is after having awarded him it's a, it's a bit of, a, of I suppose youthful enthusiasm maybe but it needs to be smart about it kick out from Flanagan won by Quilchema here's Sean Welch again to Kelly the almost always are on the same it's wavelength a and a lovely ball to Finn who yet again is out in front and wins the mark at times the way he moves onto the ball he's the cut of his father the kick comes back off the post won by Byrne chance for Leiden blocked once and twice and away from the goal but the danger not fully clear TJ Byrne a little show and go shot blocked down by Ger Flanagan squirts back up towards Lavin and in yeah, the end the a foul on Tomás Keegan well, that could so easily have ended up in the back of the ball net. Kilchuma get a free. Yeah, a mark from Fane. Again, just like the last time, no hanging around. Wants to take it quickly. I thought it was over the bar. Came off the far post, came down. TJ Byrne won it first down to an inferior to him. Three bad men got back. No foul. Didn't give away a penalty. It rebounded a ricochet pinball. Eventually came to a Kilchuma free. Lavin should point this one. Owen Lavin, son of the former Mayo goalkeeper Eugene Lavin, a man who made wearing rugby boots in goal fashionable back in the 80s top of the toe he could drive it half the, the length of McHale Road but Owen Lavin with the free 1-3 plays 4 points and Lavin just keeps the scoreboard moving he does that's, that's his second point his second free he hasn't got on the scoreboard from play yet Don't leave you doing a good job the main threat inside at the moment is Finn because uh, Byrne has been double marked but he did well to get that rebound off the post that time ball touched down by Topaz Welsh but only as far as Duffy Hart and here's McHale not quite sure where his man is McHale rips his way through and pops it over the bar on the run well it's a good job he's got good breaks deck because the speed he was going through there he could have ended up in the back of the net himself McHale is lightning quick I think Kitchmar are going to have to make a change there Mike I think, the, I think he's too quick for Galler he's doing a lot of damage now I'm not sure what they have in reserve maybe Tomas might know more than me but Michael is doing a lot of damage 1-4 four to 4 points it's back to the goal no. again Finn no mark, it was Great from a free. To get out in front, yeah. doesn't get the mark, and I think Liam Devenny is having to explain why. Yeah. But as Declan said, it was from a free. 
But players should know that at this stage. At this stage of the game now, we're six months into this mark. It's from a free. You should know straight away. You have to use your head. You've you got to think your way through. It's from a free. You don't call a mark. He is a great man, though, to get out in front, isn't he? He's doing very well this evening. I'm very impressed with him, I have to say. Well, there's been a switch in the Baal defence, by the way. Thomas Reynolds has gone back on Killian Finn as J.P. Riley gives it to Podge McLaughlin, but he left the ball behind, just took his eye off the ball there, literally. And Brian Gallagher will take the free. Again, Killian Finn manages to get out in front. Two ops. Got away with Got it. Got away with it. Not spotted by Liam Deveni. Lovely quick hand pass from Aidan Cosgrove to Matty Cummins. Matty off balance. Might have got a nudge. Wide ball. They're forcing them a bit. They're forcing their shots. They're playing into Bal's hands. Bal are just standing them up and forcing them to shoot from distance. And Kitchenmeyer taking the bait. They need to settle it a bit now and get into the scoring zone. Show a bit more composure and pop up some scoreable ones. Matty Flanagan. He's a housemate of Gooch Kilkenny and Barry Duffy. Doesn't look for Duffy on this occasion. Goes for JP Riley instead. McHale goes to ground and Brian Gallagher helped him there Liam Deveni felt there was a push on the back of uh, the ball number 10 we will have a stoppage though there's a man down from each team in the middle of the field by the looks of things so after 24 minutes a chance for everybody to draw breath but whatever our preconceptions were coming in Declan about Kilchamas chances or balls uh, maybe a, a rethink in order at this stage? Maybe, maybe not. I would have found, I, I, I would have thought that Bad were going to give it everything here, nothing to lose, as we said before, um, under 21B champions. But in particular, that minor A stands out for me, 2017. That's a high standard to win. Those lads now are 21 years of age. and They're building nicely. They're under the radar all year. Their neighbours are Kilchimal, which is exactly what they want. So they're going at it with nothing to lose. An observation, the first four kickouts from Matty Flanagan all went short. Something happened. He's gone long with the last six and Bad have won every one of them. And speak of Matty Flanagan, here he is. Up from his goal to have a shot at goal. Liam Deveni giving uh, Gary McHale the free. And I see just now, perhaps it's temporary, but uh, it's the Kilchamat number 10, Aidan Cosgrove, just to the right of the picture there, who is now marking Gary McHale. Not sure if it's permanent or not. That's a dangerous kick in Connor Welsh, beaten to the punch in the air. A flick there, and it could easily have... Thrown into the back of the net. I think that's a permanent change, Mike, looking at it there. So, Jermic Nicholas and company have moved Aidan Cosgrove back to pick up Gary McHale to try and close him down. Jack Hart glides into the space. Hart, this will be some score. score. And it is. He's a beautifully balanced footballer. Jack Hart can kick off left or right. And once he got away from the first defender... You could chalk it down. Double scores, and it's Bal who lead, 1-5-4. to four. I would have come across Jack Hart you know, over the years now at underage, and he would have played a good bit of soccer with Manola. Stylish player, really quick forward. He's translated, obviously, to the Gaelic. He's committed to Bal, and that was a smart point from really good prospect. Uh, a fine player and a good point. Dick, one thing that struck me about Bal so far is how cool and confident and composed they are on the ball. They don't look to be suffering from any nerves or, or anything like that at the moment but they came in here in the perfect way under the radar not many have given them a chance they know their neighbours they know Kilchima when you know people and you go to Balbid and you go to school with them and you know them as, as being your neighbours it takes the fear factor out of it so they've nothing to lose here they're in a good position now it's very early days but Bal are on top at the moment there's no doubt about it Mike and here they work their way out of their defence again no major pressure on Sean Morrissey tosses it back to Holian now Podge McLaughlin, outstanding in the quarter-final win over Mayo Gales. Coming off his shoulder was Ger Flanagan. Plays it in just the way Connor Welch and company like it. That was Aaron Welch, the goal scorer, to Colin Murphy. Ger Flanagan has stayed forward, freak. turns into Paul Kelly, who had the arm out, obliges almost to give away the, uh, the foul, and it's a free in. And now Ball will decide whether it will be Murphy or Flanagan, and Murphy, I think, feels, he feels happy to have a go. Colin Murphy standing over this. Little or no breeze. There's a, a slight breeze blowing across his body. And believe it or not, this goes over and Bal are five points in front. No. Well, nothing wrong in terms of distance, but uh, off target. Tomas Morley, we're in the 28th minute as a Kilchamart man. Are you sitting yeah. a little uneasy? Well, I think the management is going to be very uneasy on the sideline. And I think it, it comes back to you again. I think Kilchamart is playing a wrong type of game here at the moment. High, high balls in um, into one person in there, surrounded by three. Even the, even the kickouts there. Ball are getting every little thing that's around the, on the ground. 
the intensity is really high for them and Ketchmore haven't matched that. Trained in the Connacht GA Centre of Excellence during the week, Bal looking to work on their the finer points of their preparation coming into this county final. Ger Butler and the selectors leaving nothing to chance. And that approach so far has paid off nicely. They're tipping along four points in front. Sean Forker did well there to wriggle his way out of trouble. Long delivery down to Owen Lavin. The cavalry are coming now. Three or four support runners. Brian Gallagher, Sean Welsh. Ger Flanagan holds him up. He's a strong man in the tackle. Brought the ball into contact. No free initially. And now there is free out to Bal for a late hit. And that, to me, Declan, was pure frustration. It was. And he's going to be in trouble. He's going to get a card here now because he, he, he showed him when he was coming up off the ground. And it was kind of... Uh, oh, it was one that the referee could see as being a black card, I'd say, maybe. Because um, there was certainly no attempt to play the ball there. We'll have to see and wait and see what colour card this is going to be. He's got the yellow, he's okay. But before that, actually, the Flanagan wrapped his arm around him. I think that could have been a free. I think he was lucky to get away with that one. And I mean, that's the frustration that was coming out of Chucky there, I'd say. I'd just say he felt he should have got a free. But kid you might won't want to hear this. In times before in county finals, when the pressure has come on, they've lost a little bit of discipline. And that is key to them surviving here. That when the pressure comes on, and in county finals, it invariably will. They've got to ride out that. They're, they find themselves 1-5 to 4 points down. So that's double scores, as you said. But look, at they're, they're approaching halftime. They must stay in the game. And they must, at all times, remain with 15 men on the pitch. Thomas Reynolds, the wing-back, was the player receiving attention there. But we did see in the semi-final... When Ball beat Ball and Robe, if you bring the ball into the tackle against these Ball defenders, they're very physically strong, one-on-one. -on -one, and there again, they just swallowed up the Kilchama runner. Here's Colin Murphy, not happy with that delivery. It's a Gary Owen in on top of Gary McHale, who gets under it. Donovan Cosgrove read the break like a book, though. Did really well. A 1-2 with Kelly. And now Cosgrove is moving out towards the right half-back position to Brian Gallagher. Donovan Cosgrove again. Kilchamart men making their moves ahead of him. This is one of them. Dahi Leiden looks across. He's looking for the far corner of the field. He's looking for Killian Finn. No better man to get out in front. Stephen McNicholas is just a little late in getting there. Tomas Keegan is available. Good pressure by McNicholas. And however he's managed it, he's managed to force that ball out off the Kilchamart man possession back to Baal. Yeah, and uh, Tomas has already mentioned it now. The intensity is coming here from Baal. They're getting their bodies on the line. They're getting in with the one, two-man tackles. They're being disciplined in it, and it's working well for them. Kilchimar are going to have to raise their game or get to that level if they're going to want to stay in it and compete for sure. That was nicely done there by Barry Duffy. Just popped the pass out through the side door. Connor Welsh, 14 on his back, drifting out the field. Goes away from one Kilchimar man and a second. We're going to have at least four minutes of additional time at the end of this first half. Ger Flanagan looks up, goes long. Aaron Welch beaten in the air by Kevin Mulderig. Good, strong left hand from the corner back. That and was now from Mossy Keegan takes a touch. He's got Brian Gallagher to his left and Gallagher went one way and the ball went the other and Brian Gallagher standing hands on hips, not impressed as Ball break back down the field. Jack Hart left the solo a little high. No Kilchamot man though, close enough to make him pay. Dwelt on the shot, good block by Sean Forkin but Jack Hart is alive to it. Strokes it back to Connor Welsh. Plenty of movement ahead of him. Aaron Good Welch ball. has made a run. So has Thomas Reynolds up from wing back. TJ Byrne is racing back to try and block up that channel. Reynolds with the shot. And Ball after that. Good approach work. Finish with a wide. It remains 1-5-4. to four. We're in injury time. Yeah, the foot has come off the gas a bit now. Ball's last couple of attempts in the last final pass have been disappointing. They've put one up in the air and they've kicked the name of the shot there as well. They need to get regain their composure. They're leaving Kitchima in this now. Kitchima could finish strong yet at the end of this half. Paul Kelly guarding that ball as he moves down the left wing. Lavin into Sean Topaz Welsh. A little bit of a shimmy from Welsh. Back to Killian Finn. And Killian Finn slipped as he made contact. Furious with himself. Another wide for Kilchuma. And they have left uh, quite a few after them now in this first half. They have, and there's two things in it. One, they're snatching at them, there's no doubt about it. And the second thing, Ball are putting them under a fair bit of pressure in there. They're tackling well. But you'd expect that. They need to be smarter with their final pass and, and with their shot selection. Because that one really, I don't know, was there a shot on there? He, he really snatched it and it went wide and it was no real threat. 
Matthew Flanagan taking great time, great care over this kick out. Again, he goes long. Kilchumar shutting off all the short options. JP Riley, what a find he's been for Bal, the, the Longford man. Gives it inside to Connor Welch. Totally unmarked to Sean Morrissey. Can't finish. Ends up being a pass across the face of goal, just in the general direction of Aaron Welch. And Sean Morrissey, well, yeah. from that sort of range, should have scored. But, but he went for the spectacular outside of the right boot. He should have just composed himself, stood into the left-hand side and curled it over with the inside of the boot. He took the wrong option. Killian Finn, ball drawn to him like a magnet, time and time again. He's manoeuvred himself out in front, left wing, right wing, makes no difference. And now he has drawn a free Stephen McNicholas taking in water at corner back for Ball on Finn uh, Declan yeah Finn is getting an awful lot of ball he's winning the ball he just got to make sure that there's an end product out of it it doesn't necessarily have to be from him maybe from runners off the shoulder from deep there's no problem whatever he's winning the ball he is an outlet so that's a, that's a positive for Kilchamal but they have to get more of it and they have to use it he's gone again free here I see and here he is Stephen McNicholas is having problems uh, just tracking Killian Finn. His movement is very impressive. That's Owen Lavin, who's feeling heat from all sides. Ger Flanagan it is who comes out with it. But uh, between himself and, is it uh, Gary McHale? They just, or Colin Murphy maybe, they just got themselves tied up in a knot. It was Colin Murphy. And I think... Uh, they're both telling each other where they went wrong there, but Bal making life difficult for themselves. Yeah. It hasn't happened too often, but it happened there. Well, uh, first of all, again, it was Killian Finn that won the ball, but he gave a poor hand pass. Bal won it back, and then they get made a mistake and gave it back to Kijima. Now, it's been a high standard so far. That's been two mistakes in a row that we haven't seen that much of. But um, Killian Finn, for all the ball he's winning, Kijima will be looking for a better return off that ball inside. We're in the fifth minute of additional time. We were told we'd have at least four. So this could well be the last play of the first half. Owen Lavin to uh, take this free for Kilshima. Man who was born and reared just over the road from Gilmartin Park in Kilshima. Spent a lot of his time no. down there in his younger days kicking frees like that. And that one is wide. And it sums up the first half really from a Kilshima perspective. Things just have not gone to plan by and large, for the pre-match favourites. And it's Kilchema chasing county title number five at intermediate level, who trail Ball chasing their first ever Sweeney Cup at halftime here in Castlebar. It's Ball 1-5, Kilchema four points. We'll be back with some analysis of that first half very shortly. Hi, I'm Aidan Crane. Welcome to our state-of-the-art showroom factory here in Balna, where we hand make bespoke kitchens. All our kitchens are 100% Irish made. We manufacture all kitchens to the highest standards to ensure customer satisfaction. 
If you would like to speak to our team, we are offering a, no, a free no obligation consultation with our team. You can book on our website at cranekitchens.ie or call us at 096-795-90. As we approach National Volunteering Week, Mayo COVID Community Response Team would like to express their thanks to the volunteers in Mayo GAA clubs and to all volunteers right across Mayo for their superb volunteering throughout the COVID crisis. The work that you do and have done and continue to do is greatly appreciated. And you're welcome back. We're live from Elvery's McHale Park in Castle Bar. It's the 2020 County Intermediate Football Final. And word of a change, Kilchamaw are bringing in number 20, Liam Kelly, and they're taking out number seven, Brian Gallagher, was on a yellow. And uh, very experienced uh, defender, Brian Gallagher. He will, be, he will be a loss. He was outstanding here in the uh, semi-final win over Hollymont Moore and another change being flagged. Just trying to figure out if it's on the uh, Kilchama side. Indeed it is. They've taken out uh, number 14, TJ Byrne, and brought in number 21, Connor Malee. So Jeremy Nicholas Declan has made two changes at halftime. 
Liam Kelly and Conor Malion. What do you make of the decision maybe to take out TJ Byrne and, and Brian Gallagher? Yeah, well, we had flagged it beforehand. McHale is doing most of the damage for Balmike. Um, they had made a switch with Aidan Cosgo back onto them there. So with, with Chucky on the yellow, maybe I suppose they decided to take him off. TJ Byrne, there was a lot of ball going into him. There wasn't get much return. I'm not sure if I would have taken him off because uh, he would have been a foil maybe for fish but um, they've moved in Lavin into full forward now we'll see we'll have to see how it goes but look at they're chasing it a bit now they had to do they felt they had to do something so let's see how it goes from here so the second half is off and running it is Bal on the ball in the lead playing from right to left down towards the Albany end here in Castle Bar that was high and the arm was left in and Liam Deveni was always going to give a free for that challenge by Tomás Keegan Again, it's just uh, it just shows Kilshima a little off again, and this time it's with the tackling. And now all of a sudden Keegan is in is in the referee's black book as well. Yeah, and they're not at the pitch of the game now, and they're going to have to be careful. And what they have to do now is make sure that they stay in the game. They don't have to go chasing it yet. When I mean by stay in the game, it means keep it even, click in with a point or two. That will do you. Put a bit of pressure on Bell, get down to the stretch, and see how you get on. But they must remain disciplined at all times. Hugely important. Speaking of which, they've just given away another free. That was uh, Dahi Lyon, Lydon on Ger Flanagan. Another free to Bal. A feature of Bal's recent wins has been their strong finishes, put in big last quarters against uh, Mayo Gales and Ballon Robe in the quarter final and semi final. So you'd imagine fitness won't be an issue for them down the home straight but that's uh, an ambitious kick to say the least uh, they yeah. don't go any further ahead I know and that was a poor shot selection I mentioned it at the end of the first half I think Bal had two or three of those type of shots uh, it's leaving Kitchima in it I'm not saying they could be out of sight or anything like that but they need to be much more economical I think Kitchima are going to have a purple patch here yet Killian Finn so many possessions he's had in this game all won in more or less the same manner Liam Kelly the sub Good hand pass to Fork, and this is better from Quilchema. Leiden off balance over his shoulder and over the bar. Good score. Well, he's one of the infamous Leiden brothers from Quilchema. There's enough of them to make their own boy band in uh, Louis <laughs> Welsh country, but Dahi Leiden manages to swing over his first point of the county final. 1-5 five plays yeah. 5 and points. And he's been an important player for them in the championship, but he hasn't really influenced the game that much in the first half. And I was looking out for him myself to see where he was gone. He only got a couple of touches in the first half, but that was a good score and a good swivel at the end. Uh, he didn't panic on the ball and a good point. Another big booming kick out from Flanagan right down on top of Paul Kelly and he gobbles it up and hits the ground running. And now it's Kuchemar's turn to get onto the front foot. Sean Welsh, nice ball. Killian Finn, again, he's out in front of McNicholas. McNicholas just cannot buy a ball in front of his man. Finn slipped as he made contact with that. It's a up and under. Across came Dunleavy. Good strong hand to that ball to knock it away from danger. And now the fast break is on for Bal. Barry Duffy soloing into open road over on the far side of the field no referee not giving it linesman had the flag up referee not interested in a late tackle Ball not happy but I think it's a fair decision just on Killian Finn he's winning every single ball that's coming his way I just think he needs to simplify his game once he gets on the ball if he's going to take the shot he needs to compose himself if not then he needs to wait for the runner to come through and give a simple little hand pass because he is the outlet for the Mike. he just they need to get a better return from his possessions I'm not overly surprised to see that Ger Butler has made a change in the ball full back line Ger Holian has now gone across to mark Killian Finn who was uh, winning an amount of ball in that corner and uh, a switch sees Holian, the designated man marker, so often in the full back line. He's already seen off TJ Byrne. He's now tasked with shutting down Finn as Liam Kelly lets it inside to Finn, but he's beaten Holian to the first ball. Now, what can he do from here? He's got a second man after him. That's Podge McLaughlin. Manages to shield it from the ball man. Back as far as uh, Welch into the centre to Cosgrove and Kilchema are right back where they started. They are, yeah, but they still have the ball, so they have to be patient as well. That, I have no problem with that. Hold on to the possession. Don't kick it away, just like they're after doing there. That's the problem. Connor Heenahan was trying to be uh, too ambitious. Jack Hart had just drifted back to fill the space, and Connor Welsh now will help and take it clear. Ball have arrived Oh, that's here, a late challenge. Ready for action, and Cosgrove has Could caught Could be a black Connor card, Welch. I think. It looked like a black card, it felt yeah. like a black card, and it probably will be a black card. Cosgrove on Welsh, it was yeah. a fraction late, 
If Liam Devaney thought it was deliberate, it would oh, be a black. Oh, it's a yellow. It's he's a got yellow. away with it. He's got away with it. It's a late challenge. It could be, I suppose, he, he's deemed it a late challenge as opposed to a body check. It's definitely a free from where the ball landed. But Cosgrove can count himself lucky that he hasn't got black and is now spending 10 minutes in front of us, Mike. That was very much borderline all right. It was right in front of us here. He was just a touch late. But uh, Matty Flanagan has been called from his goal because this free all of a sudden is inside Ball scoring range. And this bringing out Matty Flanagan as well, Deck, it runs down the clock, it just kills Kilshamar's momentum. It does, yeah, yeah. And of course, it may end up in a score. It, it is, you know, I, I would have thought that Cullen Murphy could take that one because he's been kicking well from that type of range. But uh, this should be okay for Flanagan. Again, it's a bit of management from, from managing your game, running down the clock, even though it's very early to start doing that type of thing. So a free from where the ball landed, it landed about 35 yards from goal, nope. and Matty Flanagan off target it remains a three yeah. point lead I was actually surprised he came up I'll be quite honest with you Mike I thought Colin Murphy has been kicking uh, I, I, I see no reason why they wouldn't give him that kick a little bit of activity on the ball bench away to our left hand side perhaps considering a change great catch in the middle of the field by Topaz Welch to win the mark and Kilchuma are on the move again Dahi Leiden back to Welch who continued the run trying to curl it no. in and bend it in just wide well, Kilchuma need those, and uh, that time it was a lovely move. It was very easy on the eye, but in good conditions with little or no breeze, it's a missed chance. Tomas Morley, six minutes into the second half. How's your mood now? Well, I just think uh, from Kilchuma, in, in the previous games, Owen Lavin was coming on t around, taking on the loop. He's not in this game, um, and now that could be Conor and Levy is really tackling well on him, but um, I think they need to get the scores. They're taking pot shots. Good pressure by Kilchuma. This time it was Ger Flanagan that took the ball into the tackle. Leaves without it. Free for hanging on too long. Tomas Keegan. There are plenty of runs being made by Kilchuma, but they all seem to be running in on top of each other. Nobody manages to get loose except this man. Who else? Killian Finn. Again, he is the moving target yeah. in the forward line, but this time he takes too many steps and... Podge McLaughlin will take the credit. Now, what he was looking to do there was offload. He didn't get an all the runners. If, if that happens in a corner forward, then you have to make the right decision, no matter what area of the pitch. It's decision making, is what every manager will tell you what to do. He kind of panicked a bit and he, he, he wanted to offload. He didn't have an opportunity, but he loads of space. He could have taken on his man. He took a silly second hop and gave away a free. For all the ball he's winning, I know I'm repeating myself, it's the end product that the kitchen manager will be looking at. As Tomas has said, where are the forwards on the loop and runs? Where's Owen Lavin coming off his shoulder to pop? that over the bar he's, he's essentially doing his main job of winning the ball but it's not enough they need more from other forwards to help out their forward line as a unit well they put up 20 points here in the semi-final Kilchuma to beat Hollymount Caramore they're stuck on five points eight minutes into the second half and uh, didn't score from play in the first half either Kilchuma a couple of marks a few frees yeah two and marks that, and two frees yeah slick free scoring forward line we saw here a couple of weeks ago Declan Nowhere to be seen tonight. No, it's not. And credit to Bal for that now because they're giving huge... There's no... He's, he's the hand up for the mark again. He has to start learning the rules. There is no mark from a free. Killian Finn, for the umpteenth time, wins the ball. Now, what can Kilchuma do with it, though? Cosgrove. Man coming into the line is Liam Kelly. There's a, another man over on the far side if Paul Kelly can spot him. Instead, it's Kelly who's peeled away to the left. Dangerous ball drops in. Knocked down by Dahi Leiden, but nobody at home in a blue jersey easy for Morrissey I'm not quite sure where the rest of the Kilchima forward line were there they were rooted to the spot stuck to the ground and Baal at their leisure can clear it away through Matty Flanagan now Sean Welch arrives alright to put some pressure on Barry Duffy can feel Welch snapping at his heels Killian Finn but Duffy breaks the tackle moves it clear and Baal have plenty of green grass in front of them JP Riley toe tapping his way down along McHale Road on the far side of the field Colin Murphy lopes out from centre forward back to Dunleavy and Connor Dunleavy will try and use his pace here to get out of trouble he's gone down a very blind alley though and between Owen Lavin and uh, Connor like Heenahan Dunleavy has lost the ball he's on the flat of his back he does look like he's hurt and this will allow Bal to make a change this stoppage number 19 Kieran Kilkenny Gooch Kilkenny, he's coming in and here comes Val Rockney, the impact sub for Val, the man who did 
so much to shape the outcome of the quarter final and the semi final against Mayo Gales and Ballon Robe. He's in for the last 20 minutes. It's come and off it Colin is Stephen Murphy. McNicholas and Colin Murphy who are being replaced. Meanwhile, Connor Dunleavy is up again on his feet. Good to go. Could you might take the line ball? This is a good run forward. Now, Liam Kelly lock, knocks oh. it in. Underneath it was Leiden. And he just missed it by a whisker. They a fingernail yeah. and it could have been in the back of the net. But they don't look composed in front of goal, Mike. Everything has been snatched at and been forced a bit. I will give credit to Bell for a certain amount of that, but Kilchimar are going to have to reset their forward play. They're going to have to get their scorers on the ball in the scoring zones and start popping them over instead of forcing them because um, they're going to find that time will go against them and they'll run out of the road and Kilchimar... Like, uh, sorry, Ball are, are a good counter-attacking team. They have plenty of pace and they're well able to attack once they break that ball down. One thing I will say to Kitchima is that they have regamed um, the territory in the middle third and they're doing quite well there. Change on the Kitchima team. Another substitution, their third. It's Jason Forkin for Matty Cummins as Jermic Nicholas, David Welch, Adrian Forkin and Philip Larkin just change things up in the back line. But it's the forward line too that's causing issues for them. Scores have dried up completely. And they're still a goal behind. And this second half is just tipping along. 11 minutes in. Still no sign of Kulchima making any major inroads into the deficit. And Bal just keeping them deck at arm's length. But Bal, Bal have stopped playing a bit, um, Mike. They haven't really pushed on. They haven't pushed on to do that now, I have to say now. And I've I, I been thinking that they would. Um, they're, they're retreating themselves and they're going to give Kilchimar plenty of chances. And if you give a team like Kilchimar enough chances, eventually they will start to take them. They're trying to punch a hole in the Bal defence again, trying to run in straight lines, direct routes, but repel the first time. Killian Finn out as far as Kelly. Back to Jason Forkett. Forkin being encouraged to switch the play over to the stand side. Donovan Cosgrove gives it to Liam Kelly. There's just a wall of men in front of the Kilchima forward. This is Aidan Cosgrove trying to kick over that wall, but it was a poor effort. And Dahi Leiden was chasing after it. But that just underlines the point, Declan, you were making a few minutes ago. It's, it's all very rushed. It's all very haphazard. It is, and it's been the like the forward play has been peppered with poor shot selection, actual poor shots as well, and generally poor forward play. Bal are not really trying to play. They haven't scored in quite a while. They're giving the ball to Kitchima, and Kitchima make a lot of mistakes. And um, they'll need to up the ante here if they want to win it, because the way they're going to go now, the way they're going at the moment, they're going to be struggling. Sure, kick out from Bal. They get away with it. Gary McHale haven't seen much of him yet in this third quarter. Man making a break forward as Kieran Kilkenny runs into heavy traffic though in the centre of the field. McHale with a lovely lift in a very tight corner and McHale fouled and a free to Bal. Well, he always seems to be able to come up deck with a, a flick or a little piece of skill to get himself out of trouble. And again, once he gets involved... Inevitably, something positive happens for Bath. Yeah, he did well there, but there's 12 and a half minutes gone in this second half, and I haven't seen much of him up to that. The game has kind of bypassed him. I thought he had an outstanding first half. He's had a quiet third quarter. In fairness, Aidan Cosgrove has gone back and done a good job on him, so I credit him for that. Um, a lot of the game has been played here in the middle third. It's over and back between the two 45s. It's poor mistakes. It's bad handling. It's some poor kick passes. That'll suit Bal. Bal are three points up, so they're, they're, they're under no pressure, but Kilchima have got to be a bit smarter. Got to get that scoreboard ticking again and start building a little bit of confidence McHale patched up free taken by Barry Duffy but kicked away by Bal won back by Kilchuma and Tomas Morley this second half now developing into, into a war of attrition almost it's end to end with no great it, end it product. looks in a way that Bal are trying to just trying to keep this three point and that's a dangerous thing to do um, it's only a kick of a ball really but uh, they seem to be uh, sort of giving it back to, to Kelchema Kelchema just can't score at the moment here's Keegan looking to put that right and again it is a missed chance for Kelchema they've missed them from left and right and centre and it remains five points their sum total for their efforts midway through the second half this is not what was in the script or the plan for Kelchema as Bal make their way down the right-hand side. J.P. Riley had it, lost it, has it again. Rolls out of the first tackle. Cosgrove is after him. But just look how sharp and quick Bal are to get out of trouble, to find space. 
And here they are working their way out towards the other wing, but Reynolds telegraphed his intentions, intercepted by Sean Forkin, and now the break is on. Ball caught out of position. Aidan Cosgrove demands it, gets it, and clips ah, over a, a beautiful point on the run. Well, it was worth waiting for. They have missed so many chances, Kulchuma, to create or to take scores, points, at various uh, times and opportunities, but now it's one five to six points. Now the gap is back to two. Kijamat needed the point. The game badly needed the point. A great run from Sean Fork in that time. I thought Aidan Cosgrove had misjudged his run. I thought he'd gone too slow, but he knew exactly what he was doing. He caught inside onto his left foot and kicked over the ball from the scoring range. A really good score. Let's see if that can build some confidence for this Kijamat team now. Kilchamad there managed to win that ball kick out against the head. Donovan Cosgrove trying to pop it forward to the runner. That's, That's free Stahi Leiden, and he was fouled. He did manage to stay on his feet, but he had been fouled, and the free is given much better from Kilchamad. It's amazing what one score can do in a game like this when the game is open, when the ball is up and down the pitch, and there's not much happening either side. One score can break the deadlock. If Lavin gets this, we're back to a one point game, and Ball are going to have to start playing again because really they've stopped trying to win this game two scores. Owen Lavin, the Kulchima captain, with point number three for him, point seven for Kulchima, and Baal are making a change. Gerard Butler and his selectors, Noel Early, Jerry Murphy, Neil Sheridan, Eddie Cronin, and Christy McNicholas, not happy with what they've seen in this third quarter. And it's uh, Rian O'Connor who comes in. He joins the, uh, Kul- the uh, Baal forward line. They've taken out Tomas Reynolds, the wing back, and it is time for the second half water break with Baal leading by a solitary point. Tomas Morley, it is literally all to play for. Yeah, look, at, um, I think Baal stopped playing, like Jack said, in that in the, in the third quarter. It's very hard then to actually try and up it. Um, and this water break might be a good time for Baal to actually try and, and, and regain uh, some composure. But if you look at Kelchema, Kelchema have kicked themselves out of this game. They had seven wides in the first half and make that five in the, in the, yeah. in the second half. And I think that, and then that's, you know, in, in these games, I talked about one point, two points being a, being a difference. Today, they're just taking them snapshots. I think uh, when TJ Byrne, uh, came off there. I suppose it was a. It showed maybe that the they were trying to maybe run it a little bit more instead of the the long ball in. But they're just snatching at things. But at the moment, one point game. You know, it's all there to play for now. I think Bell will be very disappointed in that. Just that section there. They seemed like they were trying to hold the three point lead. They weren't getting the ball in. And as Dex said there, they're regaining control on the middle of the park. Tomas, if you got 10 seconds to talk to Kulchimar right now, what would you say? I'd say they'd need to up their intensity again. Ball are still really hard on the tackle, and I'd look at I'd look at getting it to the guys that can put it over the bar. Owen Lavin hasn't come into it yet, but he will take them shots. Mossy Keegan, but they're taking snatch shots. The Cosgroves at the moment are bringing the game to Ball. They are. The running game is working for Kilchimar. They need to do more of it, and Ball needs to start going more direct and start looking for more scores. It's all to play for. It's exactly as been wanted from a neutral point of view. We're going into the last quarter. It's a one-point game. Let's hope for a bit of better fare in the fourth quarter than in the third. And Dick, if you've got 10 seconds with the ball, lads, what's the message? Let's start playing, lads. Let's go back to what we did in the first half is the message I was saying. Let's hit the full forward line. Let's go and try and win this game by positive football. That's the way to win football anywhere. Jack Hart trying to make something happen. The young corner forward, but he just delayed the pass, intercepted by Leiden. He's had a good second half, Dahi Leiden. Kiljuma have managed to turn it over. They try to bulldoze their way through in the end. Look how quickly Baal got men back and swarmed the ball carrier. Now Kilchama are doing unto them what Baal did initially and eventually J.P. Riley, the Longford man, comes out with the ball in under his oxter, free to Baal. But this is a county final, Mike, and that's the type of possession, that's the type of aggression, that's the type of intensity that you'd expect to see, and if you were managing, that's the type of intensity you demand off your players. Baal, they've never even played in a county intermediate football final before, but they are very fast learners, as you, as you will have gathered did play in a county senior final back in the early 90s, came out on the wrong side of the result that day. That was back in the days when you played senior championship or intermediate championship based on your league standings back in the days of Declan O'Reilly. Back in 93, it's a while ago now, Mike. <laughs> Kilchuma have managed to get their hands on the ball again. Liam Kelly turned into two or three ball men who were lying in wait, but they haven't managed to secure the ball. Kilchuma have it back again. Paul Kelly trying to move it on, trying to move Ball's defence out of position, take them out of their comfort zone, foul on Kelly, loose man calling for it, roaring for it in fact, was Donovan Cosgrove, 
didn't get a chance to get forward as much in the semi-final but making up for lost time tonight Dahi Lydon Jack Hart is after him this is Sean Welsh you'd pick him out a mile away the big Kilchamat number 9 support runners all waiting for the pass one of them is Jason Forkin forward by Conor Malee Forkin again he's in Forkin high and stopped by Maddie Flanagan and out for a 45 uh, and Flanagan furious he didn't hold it yeah. as he kicks the butt of the post really angry with himself that he gave away the 45 but, but the shot was at goalkeeper's height it was a 3 on 1 he had an option to the left he had an option to the right he could have gone for the corner put it over the bar and essentially none of those things happened it's gone for a 45 we, we've seen Jimmy McNicholas kick these before but Kilchema have that they're in the middle of that purple patch that we talked about that we thought they would have but they need to finish off these moves with scores they're leaving a lot of scores after them at the moment I'm just thinking of all the people who have uh, booked tables in bars and restaurants nope. tonight to watch the intermediate final if it goes to extra time Declan their plans could be up in smoke they'll have to leave they'll have to head home <laughs> their time will be up I doubt that very much Mike as well you know <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we will have extra time if it does finish level. Kilchuma have missed that chance to draw level, though. And uh, as we speak, we're watching Killian Golding coming in, a member of a, a very famous Baal footballing family, and it's J.P. Riley who has run himself into the ground, who makes way, and big Killian Golding, who's played county minor for Mayo in uh, recent seasons, he joins the fun. Nine minutes of normal time left. Barry Duffy, what about this run? tears through Duffy makes an angle oh, and score. takes the score well he's capable of those sort of runs and finishes and Ball badly needed that thought he was fouled actually going through but the referee didn't put the hand up so he had to make sure that he didn't give away the ball cheaply he, he rode the tackle got himself right into the D and popped over a lovely score and as you said Mike bad, badly needed that score that leaves us one six to seven points now two point game well they hadn't scored in so long Ball seemed like an eternity they were spending more and more time inside their own half as well, but that raid down the field ends with that inspirational point from Duffy as Kilchema try to return with interest back down the other end. Foul spotted by Liam Devenny. It'll be taken as quickly as they can now. Time is of the essence for Kilchema. They're two points down and fighting for their lives, beaten in 16 and 17 after a replay. They do not want to make a habit of losing county intermediate finals this is uh, Rian O'Connor the boot was high Sean Forkin I think just uh, was lucky there he didn't feel the full force of it free to Kilchima again they're trying to force the pace Keegan That's he spots ball. the run of Sean Forkin so too did the Ball defender Ger Holian and Ball managed to intercept to win the ball back and another Kilchima attack breaks down Rian O'Connor the solo is high taken off his boot by Finn that was casual and a little careless from the Ball sub, Cosgrove, Lavin, back to the runner, Kelly, Welsh, and now Connor Malee. Malee with a little bounce to buy time. Now Cosgrove, there's a platoon of Ball men back, 12 or 13, dangerous ball, Flanagan comes, gets there, and Matty Flanagan yeah, hangs well, on Flanagan. tight and gets the free. He did well, he did well, but I didn't know now, did, did, was Malee shooting or was he putting it in at the edge of the square? It looked like he was popping it in. Uh, Ball defended very well, they've a lot of numbers back, but they're, not, they're disciplined in the tackle, not giving away any silly frees. Aaron Welch in a foot race here with Mulderig. They look joined at the hip as they raced out towards the sideline. Free man here. Decision oh, goes Ball's way. pulled it back. Well, the decision seemed to go Ball's way. I think there's a, a consultation between the linesman and the referee, and I saw him signalling what looked like a hot ball, but in any event, Kilchuma are making a change. Killian English is coming in to replace Conor Heenahan with seven minutes, less than seven minutes to go this county final balanced on a knife edge it is yeah but there's a few twists left in this one yet Mike because both teams are are maybe struggling to get their scores but Kilchema the running game is good they're just running into a bit of traffic later on but I, I have a feeling they're going to break through at least once Donovan Cosgrove still trying to drive Kilchema down the field but that pass just didn't stick to Paul Kelly it ran free and Barry Duffy now is starting to come more and more into the game Connor Welsh has dropped back as well to bolster that uh, middle of the field for Ball quick hand pass by Morrissey as Val Rockneen plays it all the way across to Rian O'Connor he's got on a few balls Rian O'Connor this one he uses wisely Ger Holian lovely sidestep to get away from Thomas Keegan who's starting to cramp up by the looks of things not so Holian still going strong Aaron Welsh the first half goal scorer he could turn out to be the hero yet oh, Gary McHale brilliant take to beat 
Malie in the air. Gary McHale with his second Let's fisted score. point of the county final. And Gary McHale knocks over his third point in all. Well, Gary McHale is some man on the ground. He is some man in the air. And once he got through on goal there, you could chalk it down. One seven to seven points, a goal between them. But that point was about his take, his, 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 his fetch over the head of Cosgrove. He did really, really well. He kept his eye on the ball, shrugged off the man, soloed through. He shows great composure on the ball. He does a lot of things that the Kitchener forwards are not doing. Holds the head and pops it over simply. Very good score from Ball that time. And a good score from one of the best players on the night, Gary McHale. Well, he's playing the football of his life this season for Baal Gary McHale Ger Butler has got the best out of him in the last few weeks will it prove to be good enough Baal now won 7-7 seven to seven points in front still I, I, a long way to go though I've been watching Conor Dunleavy very closely on Owen Lavin and I was wondering why isn't Owen Lavin getting on the ball or looping around simply because Dunleavy's not letting him he's all over him like a rash in fairness to him he hasn't left his side since the ball was thrown in at the very start he's putting in a huge performance for Baal Dunleavy a former county minor he has been detailed to pick up this man on the ball, Owen Lavin. And from open play, he has shut him down. But Lavin's free, drop short, free out. Yeah, the, the confidence seems to be gone a bit on Lavin. And again, credit to Dunleavy. He's having a storming game. It's one of the matchups that we would have identified at the very start of the game. And there's no doubt about who's coming out on top. Owen Dunleavy, or Dunleavy's having a fine game. Conor Dunleavy having a great game. You have to go back to 2001 for Kilchamah's last intermediate title win. Can they come back here? turn this thing around and get their hands on the Sweeney Cup right now it does not look good another Kilchima attack has broken down this time it's the latest substitute Owen Carroll who comes up short ball ricochets around the oh. ball defence they give it away they get it back again and tidied up by Kieran Kilkenny and smuggled out as far as Val Rockneen hasn't been as influential tonight since he came on as he was a couple of weeks ago but still getting his hands on the ball doing nothing Silly, and here he is again. Rockney just lost his footing there under a little bit of pressure. McHale, he had it lifted and was gone before anybody knew what was happening. And there's the pace as he cuts his way through. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the difference. Well, I think our man of the match award has been wrapped up already. Gary McHale, two points in two minutes, four in total, all from play. Ball lead by four, and they are inching closer and closer as Val Rockney catches the kick out goes long looking inside for Aaron Welsh out number two to one Kilchima get the free Kilchima Decker in all sorts of trouble they're on now. the ropes Mike they're on the ropes and they're going to have to come up with something that they haven't shown all day because Ball are defending with their lives and they're not letting them through and they're forcing Kilchima to make fundamental errors all day long they can't get the ball inside and when they do they cough it up very cheaply some of their passes are poor and their shot selection has been very disappointing well it looks right now as if Ball are about to pull off an upset here and ambush Kulchama, but they need a goal, surely. Oh, that's brilliant from Podge McLaughlin. I'm not quite sure how he managed that, but he got the hand in so quickly. He was like yeah, a three-car trick man there, the way he took the ball <laughs> off the toe of... Uh, Connor Malley. It was gone before you knew what was happening. It's been a great snapshot of how Ball have played, though. Ball have had that level of intensity a little bit higher on the on the on the on the gauge than Kitchima all evening, and it's typical of getting a hand in. And you have to commend them for the fact that they haven't given away those frees and they haven't let Owen Lavin kick them over the bar from 13 or 15 meters. It's been really good defensive duties there from Ball. Well, this looks uh, a worry for Ball now. Podge McLaughlin, the man who executed that tackle that led to this free out, he's down and injured. Tomás Morley, 28 minutes into the second half. It has not gone to plan for Kilchima. And yet, where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, look, at they're on the ropes, as you said. Um, but they only scored seven points. And I think how many of them have been actually from uh, open play? Uh, there was only about two, I think. Two at the it, most. It's not up to their standard. Um, the Ball have been just really, really good, really intense. All their tackling, everything they're doing, they're running. Now, they, they, they let it slip in the third quarter, but they're getting back control here. And I think the legs are going from Ketchum out too. Well, they were written off in all quarters. Ball coming into this game, not given a chance. As far as I know, in any of the local papers, on any of the podcasts, in any of the pre-match discussions or predictions, they were the 2-1 to -one outsiders coming in. But they did fancy their own chances they were quietly confident. They just have that innate self-belief, Bal. As uh, Declan mentioned earlier, under 21B, under 21C, minor A, the junior of a couple of years ago, this particular group have enjoyed a lot of success over the last four or five years. 
and Kulshima once again try to break through that wall, that barrier that is the Baal defence and nothing doing. And like in fairness to Baal, what they're doing is they're forcing Kilshima into making unforced errors really. I know it's a contradiction in terms, but like that 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 pass there from from Killian Finn, there was no pressure on that one, and they just kicked it straight to the Kilchima, and it hasn't it's happened all over the place for for Kilchima, and it's been really good aggressive defending farm ball, very impressive in that in that regard. They've been very good. Kilchima need to come up with a goal here and quickly now to have any chance of pulling this out of the fire. Paul Kelly back to Killian Finn. He's going to shoot on sight. He's going to shoot for the score, and that is well wide. Well, it just has not been Kilshima's night. No, it hasn't. But the credit has to go to Bal, Mike. Again, I know we're repeating it. It's, it's defensively. I think their discipline in their defence really has been their key. That they haven't given away the fouls. They haven't given the soft freeze to Kilshima. And they forced him into doing stuff that they didn't really want to do. He didn't want to shoot that time. They forced him into shot. The two times before that, they got turnovers on the, in, in the tackle. So uh, credit to Bal where it's due in fairness to him. We're going to have at least five minutes of additional time. That is music to the ears of Kilshima. Not so for Bal, you'd imagine. They have never won this championship. Well, perhaps five minutes longer won't put them up or down. Time will tell. Rian O'Connor did well there. The youngster got his hands on the ball and he hung on tight and he's managed to win a free. But so far, Ger Butler, the man who won this competition with Shrewl many moons ago, his game plan, his master plan, working to perfection. His Bal team, four points in front, heading down the home straight. Val Rockneen takes a toe tap, gets the head up. One man to hit inside. That's Aaron Welch. Mulderig at full stretch. Back to cover was Jason Forkin. Backing him up. Forkin runs into Welch. Needs support. He's got Owen Carroll beside him. Referee gives him the benefit of the doubt. Paul Kelly goes long. He's kicking it right down on top of the sweeper. And Podge McLaughlin... Made to look very impressive again by Kilchamar. But Bal will take those all day long, Mike. They're, they're, Kilchamar are playing into their hands now. Sound of Liam Deveni's whistle signals a free to Kilchamar. Liam Kelly knocks it in around the house. Sean uh, or, uh, Welsh was under it. Jumps above the Bal defender but couldn't hang on to it. And the body language from Kilchamar, Tomás Morley telling as they retreat back out the field. Yeah, look, there's about three minutes left, I suppose, if, if and I think Kachamar just, the legs are gone in some of the players, influential players, and that, that them kicks, they're aimless, they're just going in, looking for maybe a goal, and uh, time has ran out for them. Um, it just, I suppose, a disappointing game for them, but Bal had been excellent. And there is another example. Matthew Flanagan, long to Val Rockneen, right from the training ground, Mark to Bal, and they will now try and use these last few minutes wisely well presuming and assuming that Bal go on to win this it will be some story the team that just a few years ago were operating in division six of the mayo league climbed their way up through the leagues promoted from the junior championship in 2018 and within two years they're on the brink of their first ever intermediate title as kulchama lose their way yet again and it looks at this stage as if their story, their long story of intermediate final disappointment is about to continue. Dexter. Yeah, it's going to go on for another while, Mike. Um, Bal, in fairness, to, in fairness to the lads, the management team now, Jared Butler and the lads, they've done their homework. They knew how to play Kitchimah. They set themselves up defensively very well. They forced Kitchimah to come up to a certain level and then to see what they could do. Could they break a tackle? Could they take a shot? And invariably, Kitchimah have played into Bal's hands. So credit tactically to the Bal management team here. Aaron Welsh races on to the breaking ball. He's the man that scored the goal, that got them up and running, but he just delayed the shot. That was brilliant from Kevin Mulderig, who busted gut to get back and make the block. He's cramped up, he's seized up the Kilchima corner back, but he's kept going, kept plugging away, as have his teammates. Conor Malee trying to get something going again. Out to the far side to Owen Carroll. We're into the fourth minute of additional time. We're heading towards the fifth. It's goal or nothing now, surely, as the shot comes in from Conor Malee. Another wide for Kulchima. Well, they're hitting wides to beat the band in this second half, the Kulchis. And the longer this goes on and the more they kick those wides, the more I start to think, Declan, it will be practically impossible, you'd imagine, 
to get a table in the rendezvous in Bal on Monday. I'd say it'll be fairly happening in John Dempsey's in the old woods as well, I'd imagine. Now, some, in fairness to Bal, great football people out in Bal. They love their football. And the one thing that I had in my head coming into this is that minor A in 2017, Mike. You do not win minor A's easy. You can hold on to those players. You're at a very, very high standard. And they're, they come in under the radar in, in a perfect way to come into a final. Kilchema, one last throw of the dice, perhaps. It could be time to stick on the pizza oven in Corley's in Belcara, I think, because <laughs> Bal will be heading in that direction, I'd imagine, very, very shortly with the Sweeney Cup in tow. 1-8 to 7 points. They're four in front. They have bossed this intermediate final from the moment Aaron Welch stuck the ball in the back of the Kilchamat net and wrote his name into Bal GA folklore. Jack Hart springs into the air to win that ball. Haven't seen a whole lot of Jack Hart up at the other end, but he has worked and played that role to perfection. Ball have made a mistake here. They've given it away. Killian Finn cuts oh, in. Oh, black card. And that is a black card all day long. In fact, that's why the black card was brought in for that sort of tackle. Dunleavy yeah. on Finn. Dunleavy will say, you do what you have to do. Yeah, but that was as cynical as it comes. It was, yeah. Out and out cynical. But he's taking one for the team there. Don't really like to see it, but I can understand why he's done it. He won't get any harsh words from the management there. I presume he's going to get a black card. I haven't seen one yet. He hasn't got one, no. That's unusual. Well, That I'm was a nailed on black card, but he's still on the pitch. Owen Lavin, would he do a Michael Meehan on it? He's gone for it all right, and he's drilled it wide. It's all yeah. over. And if you're from Bal, wherever you're watching on this Saturday night, the party starts right here. Ger Butler in the thick of it again. Bal celebrates a famous historic victory in their first ever intermediate final. They've only gone and won it. The two to one outsiders, Bal, have upset the odds. They have shocked the favourites, Kilshuma, and they've beaten Kulshi 1 8. To seven points. Declan, your selection for man of the match from the intermediate final. Yeah, it goes to a bad man. I, again, I mentioned Conor Dunleavy. I thought he didn't understand the game, but from forward, four points in play, I think Gary McHale is the man of the match. I thought he had a quiet third quarter. He had an excellent first half, and he finished very strong in the last quarter. Overall, four points in play, but a real threat. Uh, a, a player that maybe could go on and play at a higher level. His pace and his strength and his awareness, and he was able to get points where him off full forward line were simply not able to do that. I mean, the whole six of them, he looked like he stood out like a beacon Gary McHale man the match Mike it's the mighty Gary McHale from Manola the man who's made so many headlines in Super League matches over the years with Manola for scoring big goals who is Declan O'Reilly's selection for man of the match four points from play for him and uh, it's finished here in the intermediate final Bal absolutely broken heart or Kilchamot rather absolutely broken heart that I can see them just rooted to the spot where they stand they cannot believe another one has got away the Sweeney Cup is going back to Baal. It's finished. Baal won eight. Kilchema, seven points. The Egan Jewelers Intermediate Football Final has finished. And I know I'm not beside someone who was a neutral, but for a neutral watching that game, we just commented on the stand. If you wanted excitement at Elbrus McHale Park this evening, well, this was the place to be, or Mayo GA TV was the place to watch it. Thomas, I know you're bitterly disappointed with that. There's no point in saying anything else. And it is a shock result, it has to be said, because people expect to kill Shemont to pull this off. But, you know, there's no question that Baal had their homework done and knew exactly what they wanted to achieve at the end of this. Yeah, look, as I said before the game, I expected Kill Shemont to win, but I also said, you know, county finals have, have uh, a life of their own. Um, I think from the very uh, get-go, I think Baal were just, they were so eager, they were so high in the intensity levels. They, they, they just went at uh, Kill Shemont. Uh, the real thing for me was that you know there's 14 wides from Kelchamar there, uh, Bal um, dropped and dropped a good few guys back, and Kelchamar had no answers. They, you know they got the ball in, but all the all the shots were snatch shots. On the other hand, Bal had a, a, a ropey third quarter, but had done enough, and um, that goal was a massive uh, score for them. Kept them just you know they didn't have to. They could drop and they could soak up that pressure. Ketchumar just couldn't answer, they couldn't actually uh, make a, a pattern of play that got the ball 2-0 and 11. Conor Dunleavy um, played very well on him. Their scorers just weren't there today. You know, um, as I said, 14 wides. Um, 
you know, from the last 10 minutes, they were just kicking aimless ball into the full forward line. Uh, they won't be happy with this. It's, it's, it's a bitter defeat for them. Um, but as I said, and I said during the week, sometimes for a, a, a club like Baal, it's a snatch and grab. You get the chance to do it, you've got to do it. Um, it reminds me, we'd say, of Ketchumar, like Burr in past years. They just couldn't get over that line. Um, and it's about staying together. And they've, in fairness to them, they have all through these years. But this is a hard one for them to take. Declan, I think that's a, you know, that the really sums it up what the Moses said there. It just didn't happen for Kilshima. And even with, you know, a lot of mistakes by Baal, especially in that final quarter after the, the, the second water break here this evening, Kilshima just couldn't find a way through or a way to make their dominance. They were very dominant in the first quarter of the second half, but it didn't reflect on the scoreboard. No, but I would give credit to Baal. I would give credit to their management, the way they set up defensively. They identified the scores from Kitchima and they kept them quiet and it didn't happen by accident and they pinpointed there obviously Owen Lav and Conor Dunleavy doing such a good job and they were letting the people from Kitchima have the ball who they felt would not hurt them on the scoreboard and that worked out quite well. I thought they were extremely disciplined in their tackling because they often had 10, 11 and 12 people back behind the 45, it's very easy sometimes to give away a free, a cheap free they didn't do that for the even, so credit has to go to their management and the way they set up and credit must go to their players for the manners in which they carried out those instructions, they played it well I would have felt bad with coming in here completely under the radar with nothing to lose we talked about it beforehand, I identified obviously that minor A from 2017 that's a high standard, to be able to bring those fellas through in with a junior title and an under 21 B title they have good players and Baal always believe in themselves and they back themselves and because they were playing their neighbours Kilchema when you go to school with people when you know them there is no fear factor and you'll say to yourself we can take these lads on and that's exactly what happened and they went at it in the way they wanted to keep it a low scoring game Kilchema were scoring freely for the last semi-final and quarter-final but Bal stopped them doing that tonight. So Bal won it tactically on the line, credit to them, but ultimately the players won it for them on the pitch. I know we, we will take the presentation as well, just to remind you here in Mayo GA TV uh, as soon as we're ready to go uh, in the presentation spot. But the most, you know, speaking about underage success, and I'm, I'm conscious you might get interrupted in the, in, with this, and we'll come back to it if we don't. I know that the, we were talking there during that second half. Bal have been building an awful lot of underage over the last few years. And by golly, they've had some last few years um, at a number of grades, and it's reflected here this evening. Yeah, and I suppose the, the club will look at, we'll say, Pat Fallon bringing them uh, uh, through in the last while too. Um, and the young lads today, I, I was so impressed with, with, with the way that they actually just went at them. The legs, uh, we talk about this strength in the legs and speed was very important today. Um, again, uh, not, your, not your typical game. It was, you know, up and down. I think Bal, I suppose, um, just... They were so economical with their scores as well when they went up, uh, two fist hand passes over the bar. Um, you know, it was equal and out around the middle of the field. They got a lot of breaks, Bal. Um, but the underage and the fact that they that they have come up through junior and all the way up, they've had to battle. Junior is a hard thing to get out of, and that was only two years ago. And to get to an intermediate final now is is, is beyond what I think they were thinking of at the start of this year. But all credit to them, and I know Bal and... Uh, all the, I suppose it, I was going to say all the pubs, everything would be, <laughs> be but obviously not. But um, you know, it's a great town, um, a great support, great people in it. Like um, you know, as I said at the start of this, you don't know what's going to happen in the county final, but it could come down to heart and passion and intensity. Bal had that from the start today. Bal, I suppose, took the game to Kelchima, and I think Jack said there a while ago they actually bullied them around the place, and, and there was a little bit of that mm -hmm. really hard hitting. Um, didn't let them breathe when they had the ball and right to the end two or three guys were actually uh, tackling hard dispossessing and it just I think it, 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 it built some fear in Ketchumar to just take them shots when they weren't on and Declan you made that point you know of, of Baal having a, a, you know, a game plan I know we all they all go in with a game plan but their game plan was very effective this evening wasn't it and it comes yeah. back to that point you made initially yeah and first of all you have to have one devise one for management one that works for you I suppose the one that works for your team and maybe take into consideration what the opposition might do and reflect a bit on that as well. But ultimately then it's up to the players to be able to carry out that those instructions and they did it very well. And I would say that Jerry gives I'd say he empowers his players to play because it looks like they're a counter attacking team and once they go and play and run that ball through the hands, they're very effective and they got some lovely scores. And in particular the likes of Gary McHale, Connor Walsh was very effective up front. I love the way that um, 
Jack Hart plays his football. He came down deep and he was winning the ball. Very stylish player. So look at full value. Congratulations. Well done. Well, uh, Gary McHale has joined us and uh, Gary, your ears should have been burning there, but in a good way, Declan, we're just praising that performance. Listen, congratulations on the man of the match accolade, but I know most importantly for you this evening, the fact that you're picking up an intermediate title. This is incredible for the club, isn't it? Oh, it's absolutely unbelievable. Like Everyone's been doubting us all year long. Nobody gives us a shot. We're underdogs since the group stage. And she look at us now like, you know, unbelievable. I was making the point there just a few moments ago to the lads that you've had huge success in the club over the last few years at various age grades. And the fruit of it is here. You have the sun behind you as well tonight. He brought one or two with him. But, you know, the point that you, you've reaped the rewards of that success at, very, at various age groups here tonight with an intermediate title, it's incredible. Well, it's, it's running through the club now. We're under 14, 16s and minors all won. West May OB. So, should look at it. We've players coming through from every age group, and our team's going to get, get stronger now. What does it mean to you personally? It's unbelievable. It's, it's, I'm still in shock, like a little bit, you know. It hasn't really registered with me, but I'm fucking puzzled. Like. <laughs> okay, well, Gary, listen, we'll go to the presentation. Gary McHale, man of the match. Let's hand over to Mayo Chairman Liam Mott. Thank
the Egan Juniors Intermediate Football title for this year and we'll welcome Ger Flanagan and Barry Duffy in with us. <laughs> Ger, congratulations. Sorry, engineer. Um, great speech. I just want to tell you, first off, I've cleared up my finity of the week off. Don't be going <laughs> in for the rest of the week. Thank you right? very much. Maybe two um, weeks, Angelina. Yeah, well, Sweet look, talk. Yeah, well, but congratulations. I mean, I, I can't imagine how it feels. So you describe it for me. You did it quite well there. You did it quite well. It's surreal, I, I think. You know, um, like it, it, it just seems like yesterday that we were playing Division 6 League football in Baal and now after look a whirlwind couple of years uh, we're, we're a senior club it's 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 ridiculous it's it, it's it's crazy and i think long into the christmas we we'll still won't start to realize that we've actually done it we're up at, we're up at senior level yeah i mean Barry, is not that the point there's been an incredible transition over the last number of years within the club and the lads were speaking about this on the commentary and analysis here where they were saying there was success at a number of age grades over the last few years and it really put the foundations in for that win tonight yeah no our management and everything has been serious and all the underage managers as well which have been developing the boys coming through every year we've two or three strong lads coming to our senior team and we developed a b team as well our junior team and they won a final there last week and that's driving on our team massively what does it mean to, to a club like this to take a, a title in such very strange times where I'm sure there was maybe another you know, cohort of supporters who couldn't come here tonight because of restrictions? What does it mean to, to the area and the community? It, it means uh, the, world, the world. I don't think you can put into words how much this means to our club in Baal. You know, for, we had such a, I suppose, a storied history in 93 in senior and then we dropped to the, to the, to the bottom in between that and you know football means so much to our, our local community it's an absolute focal point of Baal you know the support this year and um, you can see it on, on social media everyone tuning into Mayo GA TV you know supporters from all over across the world Australia New Zealand America you know Vietnam and it, it, it just means it means so much it, re it really does yeah Barry it wasn't all plain sailing out there at times this evening I mean there was there was a couple of couple of times that I mean we, we in the stand and as a neutral I, I, you could feel that tension. Like, what was it like to be involved in that game this evening? Uh, to be honest, the last 15 minutes were a blur. Uh, we just wanted to get over the line. It definitely wasn't the best football to watch uh, for the last 15, but we just wanted to get over that line and we just had to keep pushing and keep fighting for it. I think whoever's counting turnovers would have been busy there in the last 15 minutes. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll get the lads to fill you in. Lads, congratulations. <laughs> Enjoy the celebrations. Cheers. and, and uh, Well done on everything Cheers. this evening. Um, they, uh, of course, are the victorious Val joint captains, Ger Flanagan and Barry Duffy, talking to us this evening here on Mayo GA TV. Uh, what uh, a couple of, of games it has been. Um, Tomás, huge excitement for Val. And I know, as I said to you earlier, I know you're, you're bitterly disappointed, but... By gosh, that club will really mark that and celebrate that tonight. They're, they're delighted to be where they are. Yeah, and I suppose, look, at I've said it beforehand, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, involved, I suppose, in Bal, uh, um, in lots of ways, music and all the rest. And I'm, I'm, I'm you know, uh, I'm, I'm delighted for them, really. Like, you know, there's a lot of disappointment. And, and, and I said at the start of this, I suppose, that um, it was Kelsey Moss to lose in the sense that, they, you know, but really I think today that Bal actually, you know, they, they turned this on their head. They played a particular uh, way today and they actually, they had no, Kelsey Moss had no answers for them. But it's about Bal. It's about, you know, this down here. You know, it looks like nearly a bigger crowd than, you know, we, we would have thought. 
um, there'll be bonfires all the way down uh, and uh, I suppose you know the people of Bal will be out uh, and, and I hope they are and, and I hope everyone gets out because you know this week they went out with an under 14 they got the under 14 uh, B county final and I saw pictures of that and videos of them going up and down the thing and, and this is very sweet for them um, and it maybe is even more sweet because they didn't they expected it maybe but a lot of people didn't and as I said and Declan said up there it, it, it's it's a long road for Ketchumar now again uh, to get back on that again but you know I know the people that are involved there you know they'll, they'll push again and that's it Declan it is you know we have to think of Ketchumar tonight as we said with Kilmina in the previous game when we were chatting after it it's, it's, it's very difficult at this very moment in time but you know the seasons turn round and they come round again and, and very soon those players will be back on it and, and looking forward to next year yeah they won't feel like that tonight no no it'll no, be very absolutely. raw uh, and um, the more than ourselves as a county when we've lost a few finals and other club teams have lost finals it gets more difficult and it becomes a bit of a baggage at that stage then and maybe it becomes harder to win them like Ball came in now Ball fully deserved to win it it was well deserved well earned 100% no issue with that but sometimes it might it's easier to win it on your first goal when you have less inhibitions and you can just go and play Ball turned up with their game plan today and it worked for them as we said before uh, maybe it wasn't the prettiest way to play football but that's irrelevant it was very effective and that's what you want from your team that's what you want from your management it worked well they, they controlled the game they played their game at their tempo which is what you want to do and they forced Ball or they forced Kitchima into doing and playing football in a manner in which they weren't comfortable with and you could see it out there they lost a bit of self-belief coming down the stretch in the last 10 minutes and they could see themselves oh this is going away from us again and, and Bal capitalised on that and finished strong uh, Bal fully deserved to win it but for Kilchima you're right and I agree it's tough keep coming back to finals but the only way is get back on the horse they won't feel like that tonight or tomorrow or for a few weeks yet but it will come around again and they just have to simply go again next year Absolutely I, I'm going to let you go but I, I want in a word from each of you who will win tomorrow's senior final Moss I said um I said in the Midwest the last day that I'm in the crystal ball. I, I'm looking at a draw in full time and uh, Brafey to, to win out. Declan? Yeah, <laughs> after the semi finals, I was thinking not more, it would be a very hard bet. The more, I, the closer I get to it, I think the need is maybe greater at Brafey. I think they're coming to the end of this great team that they have, their fourth final in eight years. I think that they make, they, they need big performances from individuals, in particular the O'Shea is going well. Matty Rowan, I think, a huge, huge amount will depend on his performance tomorrow. I think Brafey are going to give it a right good rattle, and I might just edge towards them, but it could go anyway. Very hard to call. Okay, so we could have extra time tomorrow, the two lads say. I'll hold them to that. The Moss and Declan, thank you both so much. Lovely to work with you again this year because, of course, tomorrow, let me tell you a bit about what's happening on Mayo GA TV. There will be a live broadcast. It's on Facebook Live, of course, the Mayo GA Homeland Minor A final between Ballinas, Stevenites, and Castlebar Mitchells is live on the Mayo GA TV Facebook page at 12 noon tomorrow. And, of course, the senior final we've just spoken about, well, that goes out on TG Carter tomorrow. So you will be able to see all of the action as it happens for free on Facebook and on TG Carter tomorrow you can tune in uh, it was my pleasure to be back working here again this evening I don't have much off Gaelga, so I won't be here tomorrow in terms of the TG Carter broadcast but as I said my pleasure to link up with Mayo GA TV again this year and thanks to everyone who has tuned in thanks to all of the team here this evening and over the last few weekends too many to mention and we'll speak to you hopefully very soon again Hi, I'm Aidan Crane. Welcome to our state-of-the-art showroom factory here in Balna, where we hand make bespoke kitchens. All our kitchens are 100% Irish made. We manufacture all kitchens to the highest standards to ensure customer satisfaction. If you would like to speak to our team, we are offering a, no, a free no obligation consultation with our team. You can book on our website at cranekitchens.ie.
or call us at 096-795-90. As we approach National Volunteering Week, Mayo COVID Community Response Team would like to express their thanks to the volunteers in Mayo GAA clubs and to all volunteers right across Mayo for their superb volunteering throughout the COVID crisis. The work that you do and have done and continue to do is greatly appreciated. <laughs> 